What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial. And today's video is going to be a continuation of a previous one that I had, where I talked about how to build a Java Spring Boot API step by step. In that video, I walked through how to build the API from scratch, and tested everything with the local MySQL database on our local machine. I'll include a link for that video down below, so make sure that you check that out as well. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure everything and deploy everything on AWS and test everything there. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so right now I'm on the homepage of the AWS console and we're going to use Elastic Beanstalk to host our API because it delivers a whole package of things that we need that includes an EC2 instance, a load balancer, an auto scaling group, and then we can also create a MySQL database within the environment. So it's very convenient and that's why we choose this service. So I'm going to type in Elastic Beanstalk, click on it. We're going to create a new environment and then choose web server environment. Application name, I'll just call it GeneMeister Spring Boot API. And then for the name, I'll just leave it as default. For the domain name, let me just call it GeneMeister Spring Boot API as well. Check availability, so it's available, so that's good. And then choose a platform. Obviously, we're going to choose Java, and then we're going to use the most updated version of the platform. And then in here, we're going to choose a sample application to start with, and then we're going to build a Java file and then update it. So hit create. So I think this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video and then come back. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, and it seems like the environment was created successfully. And it's healthy. And now we're ready to create a MySQL database within the environment to host our data. So I'm going to click on configuration on the side. And then scroll all the way down under database. We're going to click edit. And then we're going to choose the database engine, which is MySQL. And I just use the default version. And then everything as default, username. So this is going to be very important because we need to use the username and password here to log into or to access our database. So give it a username, I'll just call it GeneMeister, but you can call it whatever you want. And then password, I'm just going to give it something simple, something like MySQL password 123456. But you should choose a stronger password for yourself. And then hit apply. And the database is being created right now. I think it's going to take a few minutes as well. So I'm going to pause the video and then come back later. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and it seems like the database was created successfully and our environment is still healthy. So now we are ready to move on to the next step, which is to build a jar file for the API and then upload that. So I'm going to open IntelliJ and this is the code that we wrote in part one of the tutorial series. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure you check that out. I'll include a link down below in the description. But now, before we can build out the job file, there are a few things that we need to do to the current project in order for it to work. So the first thing is the pump file. This is not mandatory, uh, but it's just nice to have. We are going to add a tag under the build tag called final name. And we're going to call the job file to be GeneMeister API or something like that. And then the second thing that we need to do is under test in our main class, we need to comment out or delete this test. Otherwise, we're going to get a test failure. And then the third thing is under our health controller, we need to add an endpoint for the root directory because in Elastic Beanstalk, when it's trying to check the health check, it's not going to check the slash health endpoint. It's going to check the root directory. So we need to make sure that we have an endpoint available for that to tell Elastic Beanstalk that our instance is healthy. So it's pretty simple. I can just copy this whole thing here and then just remove this. And I can do something like EB health, something like that. That is it. And lastly, we need to change our project property under the application properties file. So the first thing that we need to change is our port number that we want to serve our API at. So the default port number is 8080 as we mentioned in the previous video. But since Elastic Beanstalk uses Nginx to route our traffic and the default port is 5000. So we're going to change our application port number to 5000 as well. 
So I can just do server port equal to 5000. And then we also need to change the URL to be our MySQL database URL that we have configured in AWS. It's not localhost anymore. And we're going to find that information from the AWS console. So go back to the AWS console, click on configure, scroll all the way down. And that is our endpoint. Make sure you don't copy the colon and then replace localhost with that URL you just copy. And then remember the username and password that we created when we create our database. And that's where we are going to use it here. I believe we call it Gene Meister. And the password, I think, is MySQL password 123456, I think. Let's just double check. Yep, username is that. OK, so that's correct. And now we are ready to build out our jar file. And one thing I want to mention is that we're going to use Maven to build a jar file. So if you don't have that installed, you can go to the website and then follow the instructions to install it. So I'm going to open Terminal and then do MVN. That stands for Maven. Clean installed. OK, so the build is successful. And what it does is it creates a jar file under target with the name that we specify under the palm file, which is gmeister-api.jar. And that is our deployment package. But before we can upload this jar file to AWS, we need to create that database in our MySQL server on AWS first. And we can connect to it using the MySQL workbench. But before we can do that, we need to open the port to allow us to get into the server first. And we are going to do that under AWS using the security group. So let's go back. So let's type in RDS. Open that into a new tab. And then under DB instances, we only have one. So click on it. And that is our database or our server instance. And then scroll down until you get to the security group section. And we're going to modify one of the settings to allow us to get into it. So click on it. And then click inbound rules. Hit edit inbound rules. Add rule. We're going to choose MySQL. And then under source, we're going to check my IP. So what that means is we are allowing people within my IP address to log into our database if we need to, if they have the credential, the username and password. So hit save. And now we can open MySQL Workbench and then connect to it. OK, so all we need to do here is to click on the plus sign here. Give it a name. I'll just call it AWS MySQL. And then the host name is the same thing as the host name that we copy and paste. And the port number is 3306. And then the username is that. Password is this. And then hit OK. And then hit OK to connect. And then click on it. And boom, we are connected to our AWS server. And then on the query, what we can do is we can do this, create a database, hit run, it's successful. So on the schema, if I hit refresh, I should be able to see a uh, store database. And now we're ready to create a table. So we can do something like this. We're going to use the database and then we're going to create a table if it doesn't exist. That is called product inventory. And then we're going to have an ID that is a big integer, cannot be null, and it's a primary key. And then we have three column names, which is the product name, varchar, color, which is a varchar, and then the price as an integer as well. So he sent, it's successful. OK, and now we are ready to upload our jar file into AWS, and then we're going to test the API. So let's go back to AWS, go back to Elastic Beanstalk, hit Upload, choose a file, and then navigate to the target directory that we build our jar in. So it's that one. We're going to choose that, hit Open. Let me just call it API v1. Hit Deploy. I think it's going to take a minute as well. Okay, so it seems like it's updating. So I'm going to pause the video and then come back. Okay, so it's been a few minutes and seems like it's done updating. 
with the new version of the API and the instance is still healthy. And now we're ready to test our API. So this is the endpoint that we need. So I'm going to copy this and then open Postman. Hit the plus sign. We're going to do HTTP, paste that. And let's just send this request to make sure that it's healthy. Yep, that is good, 200. And then check the health check as well, 200. And now let's create a few items into our database. We're going to input product name. Let's do the same thing, product A, and then color green price 1000. Hit sent. Hmm, 405. Oh, the not health product let's do it again okay so it's successful now let's go back to workbench and let's select everything from the table and there you go we have one product inserted and now let's insert a few more and let's go back to the workbench Hit refresh, we should be able to see three items here. Yep, that's good, so it's working. And now let's get a single item by the product ID. Let's get a second one. Yep, now we got a second one. And now let's get everything, all the items from our database. And it should return a list of items that are three of them, and that's right. And now let's modify one of the items. So that should be a patch method. And let's modify the second one. And the body that we're going to pass in is going to be, let's say, that. Let's do 10,000. And now if I go back to the database and then hit refresh, the second item should be changed to um, what we just sent. Yep, and that's right. And now let's delete one of the items. We don't need this. Let's delete the first one. Hit sent, and that got deleted. And now if we go back to the database, the first one is gone. And last but not least, we're gonna get item by the product name. Let's do product C. Oh, 400. Uh, yep, that's right. It's not the right endpoint. That should be the correct endpoint. Let's do it again. And there you go. Seems like everything's working. This is it, everyone. I hope you have learned something. And if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video.